Hey guys, my name is Lester and today I'm going to show you how to configure OSPF on Cisco Pi Tracer. So, uh, some of you might be wondering why I'm doing this uh, video again. The thing is that there was a slight issue where one of my subscribers told me that uh, he couldn't ping from one PC to another and I figured it out that uh, I had made a slight blunder uh, in subnetting. So I misconfigured some of the uh, IP addresses so that's why he couldn't uh, ping from one PC to another um, so this is a remake of the previous video uh, there's nothing much to it only thing is that I've corrected my mistakes sorry about that uh, so all I've done is uh, I've used the same IP addresses, only thing I've done is uh, just noted it down over here um, and, and the different prefixes uh, and the IP addresses, the range of IP addresses in each subnet I've also noted it down, if you want you can have a look at it uh, I don't want to go in details on how to uh, subnet because uh, that would be a separate video because if you don't know then please let me know I will show how to configure that as well so that, uh, all I've done is configured the uh, interfaces on R1 and R3 uh, but I haven't configured OSPF on these routers neither on this one um, uh, but I haven't configured the uh, interfaces on this router so let's get started so interface of is address 193 and the subnet mask would be uh, 27 would be 2 to 4 no shot that's it now I need to configure the serial interfaces and it's a slash 30 subnet mask uh, uh, prefix with the uh, 252 uh, mask uh, and it is having a clock rate of 64,000 oh, exit same I have to do for the other interface and it's having an IP address of 226 and you don't have to specify some, uh, clock rate for that because the other side is having a clock rate for that particular network so now they have formed adjacencies let's start configuring OSPF of the OSPF1 uh, and the SPF one so I need to type network one nine two sorry one seventy two dot one six dot zero dot one nine two which is uh, this network uh, and instead of using subnet mask we uh, in other routing protocols we use subnet mask which is 255.224 but here we are not going to use that instead we are going to use a wildcard mask which would be the inverse of the subnet mask and uh, that the way you do that is use 255 throughout and you sub uh, subtract it with this thing which is and then you get 
this thing as your wildcard mask so this is the correct way of doing it so all you have to do is the T1 and you need to specify the area which is 0 and the same in the similar manner you have to do the rest of the interfaces which is uh, which are directly which are the directly connected to this router which is 224 and 228 and you need to change the thing to 228 and 226 I guess Two to four, yeah. Two to four. Right. And if it, if you want, you can specify passive interface for this network. Uh, the way you do that is, is type passive interface and type host element zero slash zero. And the reason why you do that is because let's say if you don't want to advertise your private network to the others uh, so, uh, what passive interface does is it accepts the updates uh, hello packets from other routers but it doesn't send hello packets uh, by default uh, OSPF sends hello packets every 10 seconds so I'll show you afterwards uh, it won't send these networks. Uh, the what what a hello pack, uh, packet does it says that the network is alive. It says I'm alive. Uh, so if up, after 10 seconds it doesn't say that it is alive, it will wait for another 40 seconds. Uh, that you know after 40 seconds if it doesn't say uh, send a hello packet, then it will the SPF is, will assume that that interface is down. Or net network is down and that's the reason why you, you do that so if I say to show IP SPF interface okay there's this. at the moment it won't show anything because it's not forwarding any hello packets because I haven't configured OSPF on the other two routers. The moment I configure those two routers, then it will forward uh, hello packets or exchange the routing table among the neighboring routers, forming adjacencies and all. And let me configure that as well. <coughs> so, in a similar manner, you have to configure. And the, by the way, the password is Cisco. Um, and on our one you need to configure this thing it's the same as that but um, all right I've already shown uh, showed you all how to <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how to configure the uh, wildcard mask? And if you don't know, you can uh, check it over here. Uh, specify it everywhere. It's the same for everything. But uh, remember the prefix. You need to subtract with your. Uh, it's just the inverse of your subnet, uh, subnet mask. And which is the wildcard mask so this is the case slash 25 is a prefix which will be having a 128 mask and slash 26 is 192 mask so you need to subtract to get the wildcard mask so as a now that they have formed some adjacencies between the neighboring router. Uh, let me go ahead and configure this thing as well. R3. Copy. So if 
cut one and paste it over here. Uh, let them form adjacency between the neighboring routers, and I'll show you what's happening over there. So. So I've configured a uh, passive interface on this uh, interface. Uh, the way you can tell it, it's not forwarding any, any hello packets uh, on on this router. Um, and if I say if I do that, then it's forwarding hello packets it's exchanging the routing table among the neighboring routers the, uh, so this I told you every 10 seconds it's exchange the hello packets so if I do that again then the value will go two seconds uh, seven seconds four three so you got what I'm trying to say over here so in every 10 seconds it sends a hello package mm, some companies might want to conserve their bandwidth uh, so for in this case it's a small network let's say if, if the company had like 100 uh, or 50 routers and each 50 routers god knows how many networks they are connected with if every network uh, uh, every interface tries to uh, wanted to communicate over the network then imagine how many hello packets they had to exchange among each other so bandwidth then in that case bandwidth is an issue over there so you want to conserve your bandwidth so by implementing passive interface you reduce the amount of uh, hello packets being sent over the network so that's the advantage of it um, but it doesn't mean that if I didn't configure passive interface, it, it will not ping another PC on. It's not like that. Uh, I can show you that. If I try to ping, you could, if you want, you can uh, configure passive interface, or if you don't want, you can leave it as it is. It doesn't matter. It can still ping it. But uh, on this thing, I haven't configured passive interface. If I show you, yeah, I've configured over here. Part three. Let me see. Passive interface. R1 okay, I've configured it everywhere I guess so if I try in um, interface fa zero 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 if I try to I remove the passive interface command over here and show you all I'm, I'm not making anything up over here show IP OSPF in the previous uh, slide on R2 I showed you all that it was not forwarding hello packets now it's forwarding hello packets over here as you can see I'm not an making anything up over here so if you want don't want uh, your private network to send hello packets exchange packets to other network then you can use passive interface now if I do passive interface phase and and I show you over here then it's saying it's not exchanging any hello packets over the network so i guess you got get the point over here
so this is how you configure the ospf um, cisco packetry so on an actual equipment so if you have any problems please let me know thanks for watching